to begin with, I will uh, explain a little bit about the status of uh, malnutrition in the country and then switch over to uh, multi-sector nutrition plan and and then after a little bit uh, 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 try to you know connect uh, MSNP with agriculture system, uh, food, food system and then resilience agriculture and so on and so forth and then some of the issues we have really, you know, reeling with at the moment and some way forward. Uh, this is self-explanatory, no need to go into detail, but if you see, uh, we have uh, still 36% of stunting uh, under five uh, children, and uh, under five anemia almost 19%, around 19% according to NNMSS 2016. So. It is almost uh, three years now. The situation might have changed. We are waiting for the new data. And we want to reduce it below 10%. Uh, uh, similarly, you can see all the, all the indicator over there, low birth weight. So it is around 12% and uh, want to reduce by 5% by 2030 as per the USDG target. And uh, in, in terms of the breastfeeding, uh, quite good, but still we have to do more. 66% is not enough. Uh, want to increase more than 90%. And uh, wasting, um, almost 10% still. So want to reduce to 5%. So uh, still a long way to go. If you see here, stunting, um, we have done uh, remarkable progress as pointed out by acting director from USAID and uh, it used to be 57 percent and almost 36 percent in 2016. In terms of underweight 43 percent 2001 and 27 percent 2016 but in terms of wasting not that much remarkable progress uh, we are struggling in that front. The average annual rate of reduction so far, uh, considering from the time period of 2001 to 17 is around just 3.1%. It's a, a rate of average annual rate of reduction and that has to be scaled up to 4.3% to achieve World Health Assembly target. This is very important picture, showing various dimension of malnutrition in the country. If you see there, the male are more affected. It's uh, people of the rural area, children of the rural area, more affected. And uh, those who are better off in terms of the economic conditions, they are less affected, quite obvious. And uh, in terms of the years, uh, it is two to three years child more. And if mother are more educated, then there is less likelihood that the kids are malnourished. So education and malnutrition have very direct relationship over here. And uh, mountain people are more affected. And it's uh, state number six. That means currently province has to work hard. We have to have such kind of intervention to uplift currently. So we often talk about triple burden of malnutrition. Obesity is also in the rising trend, you can see over there. This picture, uh, same as before, uh, currently uh, having a high incidence of malnutrition, staunting, sorry, almost uh, 30, 54.5%, almost 55% in comparison to all the provinces. And uh, we talk about agriculture also, Professor Srinath and all the speakers wonderfully you know, explained the relationship between nutrition, having a healthy diet on your table and agriculture and food system in your country. So many internal and external factors are affected, affecting the scene. And if you see here, uh, the prevalence of severe food insecurity is in, again in Karnali where we show the highest um, percentage of incidence of uh, stunting. So are we sitting idle? Of course not. We have uh, machinery with us. We have been working. 
Um, and uh, we have a strong support and commitment from the development partners, but still we have to do more. So in terms of the polit policy interventions, so multi-sector nutrition plan second, uh, it was uh, enacted somewhere in 2018, and uh, we have been implementing it. And before that, you can see so many you know, policy interventions in place. So what is MSNP then? It's a consolidated effort of the government to bring all the stakeholders together to fight against hunger, fight against food insecurity, and malnutrition. So vision is to embark the country towards significantly reducing malnutrition so that it no longer becomes an impeding factor towards enhancement of human capital and for overall social and economic development of the country. And basically the focus in terms of the goal, if you see over there, improve maternal, adolescent and child nutrition. And uh, there are three important outcomes. The first one is to improve equitable utilization of nutrition specific services, which is very specific. Interventions should be there, basically related with the health facilities. And another is improved healthy practices that promote nutrition sensitive services, has to do with agriculture and other education, wash, hygiene related issues. And more than that, multi-sectoral coordination issues, along with creating enabling environment to materialize the implementation of MSNP2. So we have already agreed, uh, this is a very learned gathering. Malnutrition is an intergenerational issue. It is transferring from one generation to another. So early pregnancy, and low birth weight, again the low weight and height, teenagers, small adult man, small adult woman, then getting married, and then this kind of vicious circle is going on. It goes normally when you talk about the malnutrition. So different stakeholders then should come together. So health should be there, wash should be there, agriculture and livestock should be there, women and children issues is very important because gender perspective is very important to, to break this vicious cycle. And uh, we have local development um, issues also here because recently Nepal has gone into federalism, having 753 local government in place. They should be brought together. And education, of course, is very important. So National Planning Commission is trying to coordinate all these agencies related in one place. And there is a high-level National Nutrition and Food Security Steering Committee at the center, chaired by vice chairperson of the National Planning Commission. And uh, then after, such kind of committees go down up to the ward level, you can see over here, and different stakeholder, academia, civil society, private sector, and UN and all the donor agencies, and media, of course, have come together. We are trying to bring these stakeholders together. And this is a, a snapshot uh, how federal government is going on in terms of you know, financing uh, nutritional intervention programs. So you can see federal government and provincial government, local government. So federal government gives different kind of um, you know, grants. Uh, that is equalization grant and conditional grant. And more than that, special grant as well and matching grant. So four kind of grant have been given from federal level to the province and local level government. And provincial government are also giving uh, resources to the local level to carry out intervention also for the uh, nutrition purpose. And altogether, 62 districts out of 77 districts and uh, seven, 697 local government are rich so far out of 753 under the MSNP umbrella. So if I uh, take one of the outcome that is improved access to and the equitable use of nutrition sensitive service and improved healthy habit and practices. So some of the uh, uh, activities are related directly or indirectly with the agriculture, promotion of agriculture, uh, reduce hunger, reduce, I mean, inequality in terms of the access of the food. 
And output uh, 2.1 is to increase availability and consumption of safe and nutritious food, uh, and also the increased physical and economic access to diverse types of food, or diversified food. So under this, there are different activities you can see over here. Don't want to go into detail, but they are trying to promote agriculture production and productivity. They are trying to promote indigenous you know, uh, crops. They are trying to promote uh, those food which are very nutritious for the human body. And along with that, in order to have a better agriculture system in the, in the country, better food system in the country, enabling environment, for example, technical backstop is human resource and so on and so forth are, have also been emphasized over here. Because of the time constraint, I don't want to go into detail. So four, four pillars of food security is availability, accessibility, utilization, and stability. Normally we talk about this. And uh, while we talk about the resilience, perhaps we have to talk about uh, different factor. For example, the system, agriculture food system should be aware, should be diverse, indicated, self-regulating, adaptive, and inclusive and equitable, which was being emphasized by Dr. Srinath and and all the speaker before. So let me not go into detail. Um, so I've tried to categorize six criteria against three pillar of food security, availability, accessibility, and utilization um, by referring to MSNP2 document. So let me skip this. It is here if you want to go into detail. So of course, MSNP is there. Government has been trying to do something, but it's still, we have a Herculean tax of reducing the stunting from 36% to quite below, maybe below 10. So it's a Herculean tax and challenging the first, and we have to redouble our efforts. efforts. So there are some issues in this, uh, in this regard. Uh, the issues are we have federalism in place at the moment now. This is a new practice, new system of governance for us. We are in the learning process. So we have to capacitate those steering committee or coordination committee which have been formed up to the grassroots level. We have to capacitate them, number one. And another is all the local government are autonomous in terms of their functioning. So, so they need to capacitate on the one hand and on the other hand, their policies need to be streamlined with this issue, the issue of bringing healthy and safe diet on the table. The issue of implementing MSNP2 in entirety. And they also do have inadequate human resources because all the local level government are not properly manned so far. Still, we need to do something more on that front. And another aspect is the data. We talk a lot. Until and unless we have proper data, the proper intervention cannot be made. So all the local level, definitely they have been doing in this front, but we have not properly been reported so far. So we are, we are trying to develop some sort of system by which we get information and data. And of course, human resources, I have already mentioned. And another is private sector engagement, as uh, Professor Srinath also pointed out. Actually, they are very important. We are, we are advocating for not having food, having a rich uh, content in terms of the fat, sugar, and uh, saturated, other you know, oily things. But uh, the major producer or manufacturers are the private sector. We have to bring them together, and in that front also we have to do more. And you have seen that Nepal has got 77 districts, but only 62 districts directly and indirectly are covered. So we have to go to the more district as well. And. Um, how to do that then? How to address? We have 15th plan, we have multi-sector nutrition plan, and we have sustainable development goal also. These are the you know, guiding principal areas we have to adhere to, we have to adopt, we have to follow. And uh, Prosperous Nepal and Happy Nepal is one of the missions uh, and mottos of the 15th plan. And, um, and this plan is going to be uh, quite ambitious as well in terms of you know, making Nepal uh, a developed country after uh, 30, 25 years, that is 2,100 Vikram Samad, or 2,043 Vikram uh, uh, AD. 
So for that to happen, we need to have a per capita income growth of 10.1%. So for that to happen, we need to commercialize agriculture, but not compromising the nutritional you know, value and aspect of the citizen of this country. And we have to work hard. We have to bring all these stakeholders together, not at the center. That has to be reflected up to the grassroots level. Uh, and uh, we have to do more. We have to harmonize our policies also. We had a, a letter of intent yesterday after the high level discussion. So we have committed and uh, to bring all this table together and also to ensure the agriculture production and productivity as well as you know promoting nutritional value of the citizen of this country. So this is uh, one of the example uh, of promoting the importance of nutritional food. This is called Poshan Naglo, nutritional you know, tray, uh, having importance of um, uh, balanced diet in your daily life. So I would like to conclude with uh, just one, one thing that uh, MSNP uh, is a guiding document for us and all the stakeholders, be it a, a local government, provincial government, or all the development partners, we need to work together. We need to bring our agenda together and align our activities related to agriculture, uh, uh, nutrition sensitive and specific intervention in line with the MSNP. So with this, uh, I would like to thank the organizer. Thank you. <laughs>